Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. Let's let this one get kicked in and settled in here. Yeah. I don't know why the uh, software I'm using the stream with needed to be updated every time I open the damn thing, it seems like. Alright, so, shooter game. What is it? Well, in the learning portion of the UE4 launcher, if you are too want to play around with this and you know we'll be able to play along as I'm streaming unless you've already got it and I have a fresh project with it I have not modified or molested in any way shape or form just yet however um, if you want to take a look at it as you look through here there's a lot of good um, samples you can actually take a look at um, virtual studio I haven't looked at yet um, this is a, a cool video that goes along with that one. Um, the content examples, this one, I highly recommend you check out. Um, Water Plains is not bad. Features Tour 2014, it may be a little bit old, but still worth looking into. Um, I've looked at that one briefly. This is another good one to look at for blueprints. Um, Stylized rendering, particle effects, Sun Temple is nice, but we keep coming down here. Multiplayer shootout, mm, not bad. Turn-based strategy, not bad. But if we keep on coming down, keep on coming down. You've got shooter game right here. Unreal Match 3, that's uh, mobile stuff. I haven't looked into that yet, and I have not looked into platformer game yet. Or Couch Nights, but because it's Oculus. There's also a strategy game and vehicle game. I'll take a look at those in other videos. But with shooter game, um, if you look right here, you've got the, the cloud and you've got the book. You click on that and just select add to project. It's free and it's going to be about a one and a half gigabyte download. So be ready for it. And it works with the latest versions. Um, it says optimized for Xbox and PlayStation um, and all kind of stuff like that. But that's that. Go ahead and get it, and that's how you get it, so you can get into it. Now, I'm actually going to go into the map first, and then I'll worry about going into the menus and showing you what it looks like. So we're going to want to play in standalone game. And I'm just playing on the map, okay? One, one of the two maps that it comes with, just to show what it looks like. We have a nice loading screen. And... Nice looking map overall. Great background scenery. Met starts. Now I haven't done this the correct way to go into it to actually add bots in. And yes, there is an AI, an AI behavior, and the bots are pretty tough. But want to look around here without distraction first. You've got your primary rifle. You can right click and now this shooter game has been used for a lot of other people's templates on the marketplace. So you know it's already there and you can look around there's nothing in here but you start off with that and you can use your mouse wheel you don't default with any ammo for your grenade launcher or your plasma launcher so your mouse wheel is going to change your weapon that's nice got these and yes there's been a number of people who have just taken this straight as it is and thrown the shit on on steam and try to get away with calling it their own game they didn't change anything at all you got a kill counter in the upper left hand corner. You got a match timer. You see, I don't like match timers all the, all the time, but um, shows your position. You know, one out of one. But we've got four minutes of play time before the match ends. So as you run around, it's a nice looking map overall. Shift key sprints. Love that. Love that background scenery. The uh, blur effects on the uh, the rails here of the glass, particle effects, and stuff going on in the background, not just a passive background. And there's your primary rifle ammo and grenade launcher ammo. Auto reload. The first aid kit over there. There's one here, and more grenade ammo.
right click for the aim mode on that. So yeah, it, you've probably seen these effects in other people's templates you'll see online. And um, yeah, it's a good working system. And I'm not sure what that is in the bottom left hand corner. That might actually be a chat screen, is what it looks like. And don't know how to access that. We'll have to investigate the keys. Yep, I don't know how to access the um, that if it is a chat feature. I don't. I, I don't know much about it. I only played around with this for a short amount of time. Look, you got an area over there. You can't really get to. Yeah, there's a blocking vine there to keep you from going in. These little patches of grass. Seems like to me you'd want a tree growing out of that. But telephone booze. Anybody that's old enough to recognize that symbol. It's a uh, Typical symbol you saw for payphones. What's a payphone? A phone that when you want to use, you have to frickin' pay for it. You pay for a short amount of time. So this is it. This is pretty much this is the map, and and we're not gonna wait for the thing to end. Hit escape key and you know, cheat menu, which allows you to get infinite ammo. Infinite clap, it's a magazine, you bastards. Um, freeze match timer, HP regeneration, escape, you got options, you can change your screen resolution, quality, full screen on, gamma correction, aim sensitivity, input access, vibration, and so forth. Friends, I don't have any friends. Recently met. No, that's me. And main menu. So let's actually go back to the main menu. So here's our main menu. And you have the ability to host a, uh, a game or join a game. LAN or dedicated. It's not really a dedicated server. It's more of a host join type deal. Got leaderboards. Yay, it's me. Zero kills. Um, demos. I haven't looked at that yet, but there's your options again. So if you choose to host, you can set free for all. And I didn't mean to actually go into it. But yeah, you can go free for all. You can set the number of bots. You get server session information. I'm actually going to go back to the main menu again. Host. And I get team deathmatch, number of bots. Let's bring it up to five. Map is the same map we were just on. It's LAN is off. Record demo is off. So record demo lets you actually record your gameplay. So double click on team deathmatch. Then let me name my session. Two, one. Match begins. Seems like you'd want something like that. If you're gonna have a, hey, hey, asshole, you see me talking over here? I am trying to talk. Oh, now a teammate shows up. Now that it's too late. Um. So yeah. Um, you, you, I'm trying to talk, and you bastards are steady shooting my ass. Sorry, I'm turning my volume down, because it's really loud on my own. So. Get my ass. Hey, shit. So, yeah. It's a playable team deathmatch mode, and you also have free-for-all where it's everybody versus everybody. So you have, out of the box, a playable game. So if you want to, you could just play it as it is and be done with it. But what can we do with it, and what can we learn from it is the important thing. Look at our blueprints. Now, some of this is done in blueprints, some is done in C++. So I'm actually going to look at my pawns folder. And you got your bot and your player. Let's look in the player, see what's in here. If you open full blueprint editor, 
There's nothing in the event graph, and there's nothing in the construction graph. Player graph, or the viewport, you'll notice that it is using not first person, but first person and third person. So you have your third person mesh, so that's what everybody else sees, and first person mesh, that's what you see. And that's probably the better way of doing things. But you notice there's no camera. There is no camera associated inside of here. So how the hell are you seeing anything? Are you going from first person to third person to whatever else? I would assume that's being handled with the um, the C++. But if we look at our player pawn self, we can see that we have weapon attach point, default inventory list, which is weapon, gun, and weapon launcher. So technically speaking, you could actually take this and say, I don't want anything there, and you could remove that. How can we add guns? Well, we'll, we'll look at things one, one step at a time. And actor tick. So this is where we have our death sound. It's going to play that cue. And I don't even see an audio component here. So it's interesting that everything is, is listed in here, but there's no reference to it over here. So you get um, death sound, respawn. Well, there's no sound when you respawn, but if you wanted to add one, that's where it would go. But you already have a respawn sound here. So I would imagine this would be a particle effect, and this is your sound. Low health sound, um, run, run, loop, stop, and targeting, which I didn't know there was targeting, but your death animation is right here. Health, 50. Well, you don't want to be at 50 health. Why is it set to 50? Well, let's well, just look at things first and then worry about changing things later. So, that's that. And let's take a look at the pawn for the bot. Same exact setup. I mean, if we're looking, you know. If you wanted to change your character out and say, okay, I want bots to be a, a different um, skeletal mesh, then you could do that, I would assume, because you have reference to your mesh here, and here's your skeletal mesh, using the same hero for first person and third person. But if you're going to change them, you're going to need a first person and third person uh, character. Again, nothing here, and nothing here. Everything is being done. Externally, you have your your bot behavior for your AI tree. What weapons they start with. Targeting speed modifier. Modifier for max movement speed. So targeting, I would assume that this right here, since it, it's not really well documented on what, what everything is, right off here. I mean, if you want to go back into this you actually have um, back and great you made me scroll all the way back down uh, do, 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 do. come on get the hell back down here um, shooter game right there and this will link you to the tutorial section we can create a project but um your documentation. You can see that that'll link right there. It'll automatically open a browser and you can read the documentation that goes along with it. I'm not going to do that. To act like a typical man. I don't need no damn instructions. So I'm going to screw it up 400 ways from Sunday. So running speed modifier. I guess right here you can change your, their movement speed. Targeting speed um, for the max movement speed. Okay, 0.4. I mean would one be normal and 0.4 be half or would you want to modify this to actually create a difficulty section or selection no idea blackboard and behavior trees I'm not going to dig into because mouse will be a foreign language I don't know anything about them but you have um, search line of sight and shoot in your blueprints here so not going to dig into that right now. Just want to get a good look at what we have to work with in our characters folder. Let's take a look in here. 
Well, blueprints, we've got our environment. Pickups. Let's actually take a look at the pickups first. We have ammo for the gun, ammo for the launcher, and a health pickup. Those are our only pickups that we have available. So I'm just going to open up the health one and see what's what. So pickup health. Let's look at a viewport. There's nothing in that. Interesting. The root component and the particles. There are no particles attached to it. So let's look back up here on the main. And we can see that we have particle here for health. So it's actually going to display a particle here instead of an actual tangible item. Is there any particles when it responds? No. When we pick it up, it plays this sound. When it responds, it plays that sound. Okay, fair enough. And it heals for 50 health. And it takes 10 seconds to respawn. Okay, good enough. So... Pick up. It tells me there's another system which is probably in the um, C++ to dictate what it, you know what the other portions are. A blueprint for the rocket projectile, rocket explosion, weapon gun, weapon launcher, impacts, weapon gun, fire camera shake. Well, let's look at the the weapon itself. So we have a trail for your part particle for your trail of the the projectile going through the air. Your muzzle flash is done here. Force feedback is there. Instant config, weapon spread. There we go. You can change your amount of spread. Then spread is going to be, you know, your projectiles are either going to be hitting perfectly center or they're going to be spread out a little bit, so it adds some inaccuracy into the game. Targeting spread, firing spread, weapon range, well, that's good. Hit damage, how many points per bullet damage. Instant damage, client side hit, what? Leeway, okay. and weapon config infinite magazine ain't no fucking clip learn your terminology if you're going to play with guns and games infinite ammo infinite um, magazine max ammo that you can carry how many how much ammo per magazine how many magazines you can carry or you, you initially start with um, time between shots so you can speed up or slow down a rate of fire Fail safe reload during duration if weapon doesn't have animation for it. Okay, interesting. HUD, primary icon. Interesting, so you can set up your, your HUD icons in here. So essentially, if I was going to add another weapon in here, I would end up coming into this, and I would just either create a uh, duplicate or a child, um, more than likely would just create a duplicate and then would try to come up with a pickup that would represent that particular gun so that you could put it into the map and have it to where it cycles a weapon whenever you pick it up something to to look at for another time so okay let's move past these blueprints and go into the characters and this is going to be your uh, first person skeleton Skeletal Mesh and Animation Blueprint. Same thing for your third person, which is TPP. Your materials for your characters and textures. So that's all that's going to be in there. Effects, force feedback, I've never messed with. Because I, I don't have a mouse that has force feedback. Why you'd want one, I don't know, but okay. I'm old, I'm picky, and I'm only going to play PC games. So, okay, uh, materials, your clouds, different particles here, energy particles, your explosion. Now, these are actually just the materials for the particles. 
uh, meshes. Flying cars, okay. That's nice. Static meshes. Muzzle cone. Particle systems. These are actually going to be your particle effects. Really like the exterior of this. I mean, this is... This is pretty badass. Not only do you have a nice sky out there. Don't know if or think the clouds move. Which, you know... Consequential. It'd be nice if they did, but I mean, you got a lot of scenery back there that just does nothing but look pretty. The whole rest of that building. So when you're inside, I had that glass too. That's really cool. Really, really cool. I like this. So here's all your different particle effects you can play around with. Um, maps. Now, there's a bunch of different maps here, and the best thing that I can think of is, and my dyslexia, I'll probably say the wrong thing here, but you've got, um, it's not world composition, but it's essentially tiling. It's showing a, a low-level version of that map. Can't remember, could you come down here? Nope, this is just scenery down here, I think. But what it is, it's displaying all these other maps inside the main map. So if you want to play this from norm, um, and actually I created a test map here. So I did, I did modify one thing here. All right, just uh, let's see, shooter entry. So this is actually um, the map you would use for starting the game. So we'll just jump in here. So there is no real map. It's just going to throw this um, overlay up and there's nothing really to look at. So if you hit play in standalone game, this is how the game's going to look when you, you load it up. If you were to package it right now. It goes right into the menu and you can host, join, check the leaderboard, demos if there are any, set your options, or quit. Number of bots, let's see, let's click on this again, and looks like eight is the normal max number of bots. We're going to go with Team Deathmatch, and let's try the other map, which is High Rise. Sanctuary and High Rise. Um, let's try Sanctuary. I think we were using um, High Rise for the other one. Land, we'll turn that off and record demo off. And go into Team Deathmatch and look at it this way. So yeah, this was the other map. We did look at both maps, sorry. So you can free fly around and take a look at things. Me, I'd want to go ahead and have stuff where you can Unreal Tournament, and I'm assuming Blue is on my team here. There's no indication of what team I'm on here. So, I don't see you're on Blue team anymore. Okay, I don't know where all that gunfire is coming from. Now that's an interesting new position there, but in my way, noob. Quick reload. Okay, so there we have the um, the low health sound, and where is my health bar? Be the main thing in the bottom down there. How's all the first aid kits in this thing? Ah, well, I uh, guess I don't need a med kit now. But yeah, um, play this out. That it would be nice if there was something that would indicate other oh, make this here. 
something that would indicate better you're on this team, you're on that team. Sweep the feet. So you can respawn right behind my ass, mofo. So, yeah, it could potentially be a lot of fun to play with. I mean, I'm not a, you know, well, I'm old as shit. I don't, I don't like the fact that it's not easy to identify who's on your team and who's not on your team. I don't like free-for-all games. I, I like cooperative gameplay more than anything. Alright, I'm low health and I uh, haven't seen anybody yet. And there's no fall damage, so that's nice. So I take it these guys are on my team. So I think that would be the first thing that I would do is I would change the um, characters out or have a different selection method. And unfortunately, yeah, I can't tell who's who. Um, so does kind of suck a little bit. You can't tell who's who. And to me, that's an important thing of knowing who your enemy is. So, let's look at the blueprints one more time. Um, slate, movies, sounds. Nothing even in that folder that we can access in here. doesn't mean that it's not C++ C++ and we just can't see it. And sounds, not worried about just yet. I did add an attenuation file in here. Um... UI folder, chat, chat back, backing, star, HUD, this just um, visual stuff, it's nice, there's fonts in here, um, styles, and menu, slate widget style, alright, so, We know that there's a chat feature, so let's go over here to Project Settings, and let's take a quick peek at the input. So yeah, push to talk, which I would assume is a voice chat. Targeting, right mouse button, that doesn't target. That actually just goes into a scope mode or ADS mode. Scoreboard, fire, and then there's targeting, which is the same thing. Right mouse button again. Next weapon, previous, reload, run, run, toggle, toggle, chat. C, I thought I hit the C key. And you got normal axis mapping there. Now, that's cool, because now I know that I hit C key, and let's test that out and see what the chat looks like. Because I didn't see it before, and well, there's nobody really to chat to. So we'll host. Zero bots, because I don't care about bots right now. And we'll go into whatever. Because I want to see what the chat feature looks like. C, to me, is a crouch key. Alright. Pre-match, you can fly around the map. See, what the uh, thing I was fiddling around with on Wednesday was the uh, the teleporter, the throwable teleporter. To me, that's where, you know, we're just going to look around the map here, just to, look here, like right up here. This is where it'd be cool to throw the, the throwable um, teleporter. So you can try to get up here or get to different areas or, or whatever else. So, C... Well, I had to hit it twice. This is chat mofos. And where does it display? I don't see it. So you have to hit C again and bring that up. Um, okay.
Well, the chat feature is one notch above worthless. Okay, so yeah, chat's broken as hell, so... Hey, I didn't build this game, so... Or this template. So now every time I hit C to go into it, um, it doesn't give me a mouse cursor, so it doesn't interrupt the game itself. Um, and you can see where does it display when I hit, well, and then it automatically closes. Now that I was typing something there, now I can get back into it. Enter. It sends the message, but you would think that it would show up in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen so you could actually read what somebody wrote. So to me, chat seems to be broken in here. And V, if I hit the V key, there's no visual indicator saying that I'm using voice chat. What is that over there? Just some weird icon. Okay, so... Not a fan of the chat feature. Not a whole lot you can do with the UI, because it's... Unless I find it somewhere else, it's somewhere in the C++. Chat backing, chat entry box, HUD. Yep. Loading the screen material. Look at the maps again. Where is the loading screen? Audio, collisions, gameplay, lights, meshing, vista, sanctuary, shooter entry, and my test map. I don't see anything. So with test map, um, this was just, you know, my usual test map going into here. And then if you were to hit play in selected viewport, it just drops right in. And there's no match time starting, nothing like that. It's like, okay, so you get your weapon and it works. Bullet hit decals. Which don't live very long, thankfully. So if it escape and actually try playing that in standalone. Same thing, but you play it in standalone. You get your loading screen. Matt starts. And there we go. So, there's no bots in here, so... Hit escape, you got access to your cheat menu. Um, but if you go back to main menu, then... You go back to the actual main menu, and you don't have access to that map, so how could you add in uh, other maps? You have a choice. Take it or leave it. You got High Rise or Sanctuary. Um, adding in custom maps, things of that nature. There is no direct access to the menu. If you do this, and go to here, and try to go to any of the files here, C++ classes, if you know what you're doing with those. If you don't know what you're doing with them, stay the hell out of them. It's a pretty good rule of thumb. So here's your weapons, base, bases for your weapons. Um, adding other weapons in, I don't think would be a problem. Uh, problems we're going to run into when you're trying to change the characters around is if you don't have a set of arms. If you don't have a skeletal mesh for your, your, your player's arms, then you're pretty much not going to be able to do much here. Because the fact that the character blueprints for both the bot and for the player 
are going to both use third person and first person. The majority of the blueprint functionality is actually being handled by the C++ instead of in here. Like I said, there's nothing in the event graph or construction script. So um, a lot of the background stuff is actually being done there. What can we do with this shooter template? Well, if you have a first person and matching third person um, skeleton that I would assume Let's take a look at the skeleton itself, which is not exactly, it's not the same names as the UE4 skeleton. So, yeah, you can retarget it, and I would assume you can swap in another character however the naming of the characters is different so you're gonna have to kind of match those up whenever you do your retargeting but if you wanted to you could do that at first right now I would say probably um, looking at the way these are run you get your regular material for your hero third person and that's a lot of spaghetti. Like composite shaders here. But you've got your your basic um, three. And then they've, they've done a bunch of other cool shit to um, paint colors. And to me, that, that ain't cutting it. The orange and that blue... Mm, okay, whatever. I can click right here and I can click here and we'll do one zero zero and we'll make that just pure red but it just completely changed that Whenever I changed this one, it changed that one as well. Okay, Control Z. Undo the edit of the value change. both of them the same. Compiling negative number of shaders? Lovely. Alright, back to where we were before. So, why did it do that? No idea. Change one and it changed both. And it's running through the lerp there. Team color index. I guess this is what should have been looked at. So team color index there, blue and red. That all runs in through the emissive custom. Yeah. And it's going to want me to do all this fancy shit, even though I undid all the freaking changes. But I'm thinking that this will be one area to look at. Yeah, I changed the wrong thing, and that's why I, it created that, that mayhem of trying to undo everything. I like that color. It's kind of a pearl color there. Um, so, yeah, if you want to change your color, I would, I would me, I would start off with the, uh, the materials. We just create uh, another material for the bots. You can go in here to your, your bot pawn, and... You know, if you're wanting to play solo, come in here. And I would, I guess it doesn't really matter all that much, the 1P on a bot. Because, you know, 
but you can go here, Skeletal Mesh, and just use a another version of the uh, the Hero TPP for your uh, material, so you know that when you're looking at something, it's a bot versus a human. But you know that's one inconsequential thing. Uh, weapons, I think it would wouldn't be too horrible to actually change the weapons. Changing the mesh on them is definitely not a thing. It's not a problem. But unusual that the weapon is straight up and down. Normally when you look at it, it will be facing from left to right with the butt on the left, the muzzle on the right. Why it's pointed straight up in the air? Why? Because I'm real engine four. But yeah. And then creating a pickup, I would assume maybe creating a pickup for the weapon. Because you have the particle effect is what's showing for the actual ammo turning in the in or the item itself. So you'd need either a particle for it or you could turn off that particle for it and since there is nothing in here whatsoever, you got the pickup PSC inherited. Exposed parameter, reset emitter, emitter actions, yeah. Let's see, if you really, really wanted to, you could probably add in a uh, static mesh here and create your own version of it. But And here's the thing that I recommend to everybody, and nobody ever freaking listens to me, is um, there's a lot of templates that are out there. And yes, you could take this, this setup right here, especially if you know about C++, and you could do a lot of changes to it and make some really cool shit out of it. But honestly, how much time are you willing to put into modifying somebody else's stuff to make it work for yourself? Is the, the thing that most people don't take into account. They think, you know, I see some people that think, oh, well, you know, this thing works great. I can, you know, I can just use this and um, I've got a game. I can change the characters. I can change the maps. and Okay. I can change the maps, but where do I change the maps to work in the menu? I mean, really and truly. Start up a label. It's a data asset, but where do you change the, the maps that it loads from the main menu? I, I didn't see that because it's probably chucked inside the um, hollow controller. Holograms material. Okay. But yeah, where do you actually go in there and change the map list and update that information? So, uh, one of the things that I experimented around with and just kind of screwing around with it was um, not that, but I actually took my multiplayer template and put it in here and to prevent the games menu system from working, went over here to um, project settings, went to not maps and modes, but to input. Well, you'll have to go to maps and modes as well, because you got editor startup map, high rise, game default map, shooter entry, and that's fine if you want to leave all this the way it is. But before you can package it, you'd have to go to packaging and go to right here. And if there is a list of maps to include in package build, then you need to put them in. If there isn't any, then you can just delete everything from here and it'll save all the freaking maps. I usually go to list of maps to include in a package build and I put my main menu map and my lobby map and my whatever whatever maps I want in the game extra maps like my test maps I don't want those in a freaking game there's no need to even package them so I don't put them in the list when you come back here into the input to your action mappings 
and your end game menu what you can do is short term for testing you can click in this box right here so now you have to hit shift escape to get that menu or you can delete that everything in here for end game menu because it's using that terminology end game menu you can pretty much delete all these and or even just delete that I wouldn't delete that I would just delete all these different keys and because my template that I use is the one that I use for my simple multiplier steam template for my multiplier method and what I would do is whenever I hit escape I want it to actually go to my menu system and my stuff instead of theirs so I would actually just delete out all their crap there short term put a check in each of these boxes right here just to temporarily disable them PC where's the command key on a PC so temporarily disable them by, by putting a check in these boxes here without deleting them and then inside of my player open a project here with um, my template in it um, yeah I guess we should do it I think I have more than one project open at a time And my player character, we have a uh, player right here. Hoverboard, dancing, escape menu. So I use this instead of actually creating, um, going through the project settings and all that stuff. I actually just do it this way so that it, there is no set key binding um, so when you press escape it creates a, the widget for the escape menu and it goes through my my method instead of theirs yeah, all that crap just for the frickin hoverboard <coughs> I actually need to get my ass back to work on this one one of these days I'll actually um, do the uh, the menu Play it in state alone. Have not really much felt like doing anything today in the last couple days. Haven't been feeling great, so I've been in bed quite a bit. So I'm going to use my menu system in the shooter game and use my own maps. That way I can do it my way instead of having to resort to their system. But then you have to kind of figure out, well, okay, how do I get the bots to spawn and create a whole bot spawn system and that kind of thing. Too many freaking projects open. No, oh, I love this. Freaking hoverboard is addictive as hell. So Why is there just a random wire going to nowhere? Really? It's not connected to anything. It's just like hanging there in the air. I'm not going to delete it right now, but... There we go. There's my ugly-ass rockets. <laughs> yeah, I just haven't done a hell of a lot in the last couple of days. Just not been feeling well. No surprise there, huh? Alright, so... Wrap things up on the shooter game. Quit playing. Get off my damn hoverboard. Main menu. And exit. So I want to use my menu system. If I'm going to do anything with this project, you know, with the uh, shooter game, I'm going to use my menu system and my multiplayer system and that way I have control of what maps load what maps are loaded and that kind of stuff and if I want to like um, looking at the maps I've got my funky little test map here if I want to let's take and 
pawn and just put a bot in here. I did not put a nav mesh bounds in. I'm going to play it in selective viewport. He's able to shoot me. Now wait for respawn. Do I respawn? And yes, he's going to keep hosing me down. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. See, the bot's a little bit too quick on the trigger. So will he respawn is the point I want to see. Yep. So, technically speaking, we could do it that way and mainly include a map and yeah, I've seen it. Um, I just I watched the videos on it, just never tried it. I'm sure they, they started off with um, doing the same thing, running shooter game and going from there. So in theory, I could put together a map and oh, sh spawn right on top of my ass next time, you motherfucker! <laughs> Should get for spawning on top of me. I didn't put any spawn points in this map. There is just the one player spawn. Yo, oh, yeah, I'm not surprised. A lot of games started off with this template and kind of built out from it. Um, I don't, I don't do C++, so you know, I'm not smart enough. So I'm sure I would be if I opened it up and actually did something with it, but just never cared. But I could sit here and if I had somebody that was doing characters for me, um, I know that for Cinti Studios characters. I have the or to close the, the the project back up, but one of the sci-fi characters I actually have a set of arms for, and I have retargeted those arms to a first-person template game. So in theory, I could use that character, but I just had the one set of arms. The other thing you can do is for those of you who are um, versed at using graphical editing programs, which I don't care to do everything anymore. So that's why I haven't really messed with it. You can go into the... Um, I would export this out. You can go in there and basically chop off the arms and throw away the body. Because if you look at the um, the first person, all you've got is a set of freaking arms. They're in that lovely little Y pose, just aiming down right there. And that's it. Essentially, you're pretty much go into a copy. You know, just export that model or whatever model you want. You've already got a, for a full character in. And you pretty much from this socket to this socket, you delete everything in between. You slept with a set of arms floating there. And then you can retarget the... Um, the animation blueprint and everything else to use that set of floating arms. So you can do it yourself, and that's what I would suggest. You can start with these and go go that route. Um, retarget all the animations over because you've got the um, the first person animations, and there's only 22 of them there, and then you've got um, six montages. Third person, again, you've got 22 animations. And the majority of that is none of them are for your aim offset. So your regular animations, there's only 13. So it would not be improbable to go ahead and just... Um, if you wanted to build a project based around this, get your own characters, put them in there. Um, the menu system, like I said, I'm going to use my menu system just because. I'm really curious on, I don't know if uh, John or anybody else has heard about um, what's coming up with um, second quarter this year for Epic Games and for Unreal Engine 4. They're going to have their own multiplayer system like Steam. Um, 
I need to go back and, and watch the video on it and go back to the website and read the post and everything on it to find out because like with the advanced session stuff I'm not going to do a whole hell of a lot more with advanced sessions if um, honestly there's going to be a new system coming out in two more months that will do the same thing where I don't have to have freaking steam skim me a little bit of money off the top and then freaking um, epic games skimming a little bit off the top before I can actually make any money if I were to ever actually you know publish a game um, but I want to find out more information about that before I get too carried away me I'm just getting too fucking old to deal with these fast paced games but I know that's what all the, the, the children want you know, the fast shoot 'em ups. Run around, blow shit up. Uh, yeah, that's what people like, so that's what people want. And there's some cool shit out there, and, you know, I can build the game that I want to play, but how many people would want to buy the game that I'd want to play? Versus, I don't want to ride the, the coattails of. Fortnite and PUBG and the Battle Royale shit, it's let it die. Go ahead and, and put a gun to its forehead, pull the trigger, let that motherfucker die. <laughs> it's time to come up with some new shit. So, that's one thing I tell everybody now is, if you're going to create a game, think outside the freaking box. Dumb concept for a zombie game that we're toying around with. Instead of killing the fucking zombies, why don't you did you finally get it on the marketplace? Oh, that's fucking cool shit, man. Um, is it visible now if I go to the marketplace? Can I look it up? Good shameless plug for you. But instead of actually killing the zombies, um, using a freaking antidote to reverse the process and, and cure the zombies instead of just freaking blowing their brains out. All right, let's take a look real quick. I'll give you a shameless plug. Marketplace. Come on. Let's go. See, that looks cool. Sorry. Ooh, shinies. Grunt soldier. Sorry. Ooh, shinies. All right, so jetpack FPS basic, and ignore this guy's stuff here. Team meta, what? Yeah, we're not worried about anybody else. We're only worried about John. If it don't say I am John Galt seventy five, then fuck off. So that's that's all we're worried about. You get the animation set for the full animation set: rifle, pistol, and FPS basic. This one I know works. I've seen I've seen the guts, in other words. So I know this shit works. I've had a sneak peek behind the scenes. FPS and TPS. So you got the, the sword in there too already? Shit, son. So you get the um Projectile base primary and hit scan secondary. That's cool. Uh, sword melee, throwing sticky grenade, afterburner ability with cooldown. That's nice. Uh, pickups for health, ammo, and grenades. 87 custom in place keyframed animations. Translation that means that they work and they were made to work. Uh, basic LAN and Steam support for hosting and joining sessions. Of course, listen server. I mean, it's a normal thing. Um, 22 blueprints, keyboard and mouse. It is network replicated. Means the shit works online and can play multiplayer. Support development is Windows, target build Windows, tutorials and documentation there. 
I'll make sure I come back and leave you a nice review on that. But yeah, um, if you guys are going to pick up a template, go with this. I know it works. And it's if you're trying to incorporate stuff into your game, this is probably the one that I would go with. The shooter game, you know, the shooter template or shooter game that's um, right there, um, you can do things with it. But you have to think of how much time you're going to put into making it work. With um, John's template, I'm trying to think, I've got older versions. I gotta get rid of the actual projects and just leave the, the zip files. That's the way they keep showing up here in my library. Um, but you can actually use the stuff. Just screwing around, we were testing around with it. Um, we put in um, Cindy Studio stuff. Yeah, it's all blueprints, 100% blueprints, no um, C++ to, to confuse the simpletons like me. But, yeah, it, I recommend looking at this one. We have, actually, I know, I, I put the Cindy Studios characters into this project. So I know that it's possible to put those in. Um, the weapons and all that kind of stuff, we swapped out. and No, this is just the, the basic pack. Um, this one doesn't come with the capture the flag mode. It's just the um, or teams. There's enough cool shit in here to make it worth forty bucks, but. Okay, no game, no game modes or, or, or teams. That, that, that's good. It gives you an opportunity to release those separately. Um, but, yeah. Uh, the only reason why I even mention them, because I've seen the get to those two, and they, they work. Trust me, they work. So, um, yeah, if you're going to get one, get John stuff. I know that they work. Like I said, I've seen them. I've helped do some of the testing behind the scenes on them, and I, I know that you can add your own characters, add your own weapons. Uh, yeah, it's it's a very good usable system. All right, well, we're at the hour mark. So what I'm gonna be trying to do here, I know I should have mentioned this all in the, the first portion of the video, but uh, try to force myself back into a schedule again. I've had some health issues again that's kept me pretty much in bed most of the day. Um, but I'm going to get back to a regular schedule of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of streaming for at least one hour on those three days. The weekends and the other two days of the week, pretty much as needed or if I feel like doing a stream. But I'm going to stick to a set schedule of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday around 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If anybody has suggestions on uh, different time slots or maybe on the other days of the week, maybe do a a, um, a restream some, and recap of the same information at a different time because of I've got a lot of people that are in Europe and other countries that I'm trying to stream now and there is six, seven, eight hour time difference. So, I mean, yeah, it's almost 9.30 now, 9.22 actually, whereas it's what, after 3 o'clock in the morning in, in Germany right now, and the UK. So, kind of late for them, so I may do an earlier stream, so that it will be roughly around 8, 9 o'clock p.m. in their time zone. So I may start doing that also, but just... We'll go by the comments that are in the Discord channel, which I've picked up a lot more users on my Discord channel lately. Um, but, yeah. I will think about what else we're going to do for our next stream. If you guys have suggestions. One of the things I want to try is try and fail whatever, you know, one of those things where during a stream, if I get it to work, great. If I don't, Eh, whatever. 
then we can always revisit it. But with the streams, one of the streams during the week, what I want to do is actually play a small section of a, of a game, whatever game, and then pick a feature like the... Um, uh, don't save. There was um, the one that I was screwing around with for the last stream, which kind of screwed up a little bit on the, um, the replication, which I'll come back and revisit that. Uh, this one. Different ways of setting up teleports. And like I said, I'll go back and I'll fix the, um, the other one later. I, I sometimes make mistakes and then immediately don't want to kiss my ass. Um, and I, go, I realized what the hell I did. But the whole point of this particular video was just showing how to do, um, basic teleport systems. And, you know, of course, like this. Okay, there. Basic teleport. That's lovely. But, um, go into first-person mode, and let's have a throwable. I love this concept, a throwable, which this one is a manual, so if I want to throw this disc, oh shit, I missed. Oh, well, let's try another one. Didn't go where I wanted to go. I put the explosion on there so that I could know that it's not set. Yeah, you gotta set up this one right here. So, you can sit here and players can... well, shit. Is it the, the explosion, like I said, I put on there just so that I can show that's the point at which it registers the... Um, well, I got everything else working. This is the one I got to replicate. I, I just haven't finished replicating it yet. Everything else works, works good. Oh, shit. That's going to suck. But this is one you ought to take a look at. I, I figured you you would enjoy this one. You throw your your teleporter out and then manually right-click to be able to, to teleport to that location. So... The explosion marks the point that, yes, now it is tagged at location. Now you can teleport to it. And once you've done it, you can't keep teleporting. You can't just keep right-clicking on it. Um, and you can't spam left-click. you got like a, a three-second... Oh, we stepped on the other teleporter. you got a, a time limit on before you can throw the next one. And you, you can't spam the shit, in other words. But I figured you would like something like this. This is, um... Oh, shit. I don't want that. Um, uh, Unreal Tournament, I believe, had this feature in it. Where you could throw a disc up there like that. And then... Whenever it lands, you could actually choose to... God damn, I suck at trying to get that up there. There we go. So you could actually throw your teleport uh, disc up there to a, a set location. And then... Um, you could use it to get to, to sniper vantage points and... Oh, shit. Wrong. But yeah, uh, Ermal Tournament had a system like this. Shit. Keep sliding off. But the cool thing is, is if there's someone standing at that location... Yeah. the fuck? And you teleport to it, and there's someone standing there, they actually explode whenever you teleport to it. So, you could actually set up a booby trap, and like, ah, come on over here, you son of a bitch. Pow! And then teleport on top of them and explode them. But... I love that system that just when well, you're playing a, a game where you're trying to have fun with a shooter I thought that was cool yes I know someone that'll be um, quite happy to, to hear that He's all into the survival game template stuff like that, and the idea of farming or resource gathering and things like that. That in construction. I know he'll be digging that one. 
but I'll actually you see I've also got it set to where you can't fire the thing unless you're in first person mode I think one of the things I'm gonna do firefall I've heard of it I just never looked at it and one of the things I gotta force myself into doing is I'm pretty much well I'm an asshole but uh the thing is, I think that if you're going to be shooting, you should be in first-person mode. And I like that if you're running, you'd want to be in the third-person mode. That's why I usually kind of switch it back and forth. Um, but I'm going to talk myself into forcing myself into doing view changes or doing views differently. Because but it makes fun of my camera system for the... Um, first person view. I've gotten rid of a lot of the, the camera bobble. It used to be a little bit bobbly as you're running around. But you know, yeah, like that. There's still one more thing I need to do to fix that, but I'm gonna come up with a whole different method of how I'm doing my my view system. And John, you, you use a a camera offset um, and run in a third person mode. But the idea of just like you're doing and with that shooter demo is using first person and third person not a hundred percent there yet because the extra work involved but yeah I got a bunch of other shit going on here in the background as well um, hell I don't know which one to which we got so many freaking templates that are halfway through what we're, you know, using for discussions on things and that kind of stuff. Um, this one was kind of a hybrid thing here. Really got to get back to work on my project. I just threw this character in here for, for scale reference. Don't know why, but her hair is freaking out. But yeah, this is checking out another set of characters and yeah, I gotta get back to work on my project just because I have really been slacking lately. And have a version of it that is on my Discord. And it is this version here. Yeah, I got, I got to look at um, changing the way I do my um, view changes and views and that kind of stuff. But I need to update this. Keep working on it. I don't know why it, it defaults to that weird greenish blue color. And another thing I've got to fix is whenever you're going into a building if you're on the hoverboard it's automatically dismount you from the hoverboard so you cannot get on it while you're inside of a building what was happening was I would go in here and then I come back out and I have to hit the button twice to be able to get back on my hoverboard and then as soon as I hit escape and go back into the editor it gave me an error didn't like any part of that shit. And you can't beat those high-end graphics on that rocket. Tell me that is not the most beautiful damn rocket you've ever seen in your entire life. That's some high-res shit right there. There's another one over there. And half the damn time a friggin' particle doesn't come off the damn thing. 
don't know if it's possible to s for you guys to see, but right above the wall on the that vertical black and, and yellow building over there, there's um, essentially there's another rocket right there. One of these things right here that I use just as a placeholder for the um, the, 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 the launcher for the um, the rockets so I could see where, where I was doing on placement but yeah some high end friggin rockets that I built for this shit man that rocket took me tens of 12 minutes to, to actually put it together and make it work and rotate and everything else But yeah, I'm gonna get back on this project. The current issue, I will fix the um, the there is right there, but the um, the issue of taking people off of their hoverboard when they enter the building, I will fix that. I'm doing it manually right now, by the way. But I do like the hoverboard. It works really well with um, replication and everything else. Um, I know myself and a couple people just get in here and voice chat and just be riding around on a freaking hoverboard. Just killing time. This is not the the character that's going to stay on there. This will be like an upgraded chassis. The um, standard player chassis will be the other one from the first version of this that I put out. But I will keep working on this. And I'll give out to work on it. All right, well past the hour mark here. Um, I am going to take a break for a little bit, and I don't know if I'm going to do anything else tonight or not. I just I've been in bed almost the entire day. Hell of a headache, but still using this temporary map for right now until I, I get some more of the mechanics done. I've got very little done so far on this project, but it's entertaining to sit here and do that. I want to tweak around some more of the actual mechanics of it. The, um, the character using gravity and so forth and on the, uh, the hoverboard. And kind of tweak it to where it takes a little bit longer for you to stop. That slide to stop thing. Um, but the whole concept of this terrible you can't really see shit in here for the, the material on here but me able to use gravity to actually go down the hill and then you stop and it slides to a stop and I thought I'd delete that whole friggin turret because I forgot But yeah, all that was is um, changing the max walkable slope. So that's why you can't walk back up the damn thing. But whenever you get back on your, your hoverboard, as soon as you get on it, gravity pretty much takes control. You can't steer when you're you're sliding down the hill like that. So that was just a temporary stopgap to, to see a learning thing along the way. Well, um, that was a thought, because, you know, with this um, Polygon Sci-Fi, you've also got the, um, uh, where are you, that one right there, for the hover bike, and you've got just enough room when the, uh, the player's on it. They kind of simulate another player on the back of it, but really, it's supposed to be the the player is supposed to be laid out with their feet back here. But yeah, I've never really messed with that part of it. So yeah, that's playing with stuff all along here and just kind of screwing with one thing after another. And rip, just being done with cable actors. I even realized I put even a, a turret up there. I 
So like with that um, crappy little rocket in the launcher mechanism, I was just trying to add some more ambient shit to the map. Not what I wanted. I wanted the rocket pad. You grab that, rotate it 90 degrees. right there. So you got a little delay on it before it uh, starts to do any anything. Put random delays links in there so that um, you could put four or five of these in a map and they just add different variables of, of time before it actually spawns a rocket. And really just absolutely cheating well, I'll we'll save. It's not cheating if it works, right? Come on, hurry up. Because the rocket ship itself is actually just a projectile. It's using, um, uh, it's spawning a projectile. It's essentially what the launcher does. I forgot what the timer was set at, but I think it's up to two minutes on the spawner. And like I said, I don't have to have that little platform thing there. Just put it in there so I would see them and know where they were. There you go. And just add a little bit of a rotation in with the projectile. Extra cheesy. It gets the job done. Let's see. Well, yeah, that's it. Event begin play, delay, and destroy actor. So it only lasts for 20 seconds. But essentially, you, you've got the, the rocket, the particle, the sound, the projectile movement. It's set to be relatively slow. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and the launch pad. That's it. Spawn actor. 30 seconds to 2 minutes. Okay, yeah. But I will get my ass back to work on this project and get shit rolling. Like I said, I just have not been... Yeah, whatever. Save selected. All I did was add the uh, thing in there. I'm going to get out of here. Finish my coffee. It's good and cold by now. And cold coffee with Bailey's Irish Cream. Less delicious as whenever it's hot. Has that little bit of a weird taste to it. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I'll be on Discord. I'm even though it shows I'm offline. I'm a lot of times whenever it shows I'm offline, I'm actually there. Sometimes it says that I'm there and I'm not. So just you can never go by the um, the fact that um, I just changed my status to do not disturb because I'm going to be out of the room. But Will you look at my status? Well, shit. I'll just bring the whole damn thing in here. Oh, look, there's another update. You see my status? Just If it doesn't show me up there, it doesn't mean I'm not here. So. And sometimes, if you see that I am there, it doesn't mean it. Yeah, just don't pay attention to that shit. So, if you got a question, just ask it. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Um, I don't ignore comments. Hello, autofocus. I don't ignore comments. I just, if I'm not there, I'm just not there. Almost time I'm not there mentally any freaking way. All right, guys, we'll see you in a little, in a little bit. Uh, I may or may not do any more streaming, but like I said, on, on future streams, I want to go into a game. Uh, I want to look at a feature, a function, um, like the the throne teleporter. I saw that in Unreal Tournament. I wanted to duplicate that. Thought it'd be cool. We'll try to come up with a a particular action from a game and break it down, see what it is, and how we'd actually go about trying to recreate that in our own games. Guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you around.